Hi everybody, happy art day. Welcome to part two of our visual texture project that we are going to be creating. Uh, last week in part one, you guys learned about static and dynamic composition and you created a couple of drawings using just paper and Sharpie or whatever you had on hand. You could just use a marker too. Um, this week, you guys are going to get to apply that knowledge of static and dynamic composition and you're going to create a relief um, texture drawing and we're actually going to be talking a little bit more about texture in art and how artists use different types of texture. So there are a couple different types of texture. One is called implied texture and that means it's kind of there to trick you into thinking that it, it's um, texture that you can feel. And the other is actual texture which is texture that you can feel. I know that sounds a little bit confusing so I have a couple of slides that are going to help you understand the difference between the two a little bit better. Um, so today you guys are going to actually be using both implied and actual texture to create your relief. So I hope you enjoy the video and I can't wait to see what you guys create. So in art, when we are talking about texture, there are two different types of texture that artists like to use. One of them is called implied texture and that's the example that we see here on the left. And as you can see, it looks like if you were to run your hand over that texture, you would actually be able to feel it, but it's a trick. It's like a magic art trick that artists use. They drew it to look like it's textured, but in actuality, if you were to actually run your hand over that drawing on the left, it would just be a flat piece of paper. So it, you, they used movement and, um, value, so darks and lights, to make it look like the texture is popping off of the paper. The example on the right is actual texture, so it's tree bark. If you were to touch it, it would feel like tree bark. So that texture is actually there, and sometimes artists do use actual texture in art, like you will be using today. You will be using actual texture. You're going to be creating um, texture in the foil that you will then color around so your texture will actually pop out of the foil and if you were to touch it you would be able to feel it. Those are the two types of texture. You are ready to start your um, foil tooling project. So what you're going to need for this is you're going to need magazines and I have actually two magazines stacked here to give me a really nice soft surface uh, to work with because we're going to be using that soft surface to put our tin foil over the top and that softness of the magazine is going to allow us to make an imprint right into the foil, the tin foil. And then to make my design I'm actually going to use um, the end of a Sharpie because it's nice and round and it's not going to poke a hole in my tin foil. Um, and if it helps, if you're kind of worried about your tin foil moving around on you, you can cut it a little bit longer than your magazine and just kind of fold it over the edge. And if you're really nervous, you can tape it down. Not sure where my tape went. There it is. So you can just tape it down on the back so that it doesn't move around on you. Okay, so you can do this project a couple different ways. I'm just gonna tape the one side there. That should be good enough. Okay, so you can do this project by starting off um, with dividing your foil into different sections uh, for your five different textures that you are going to work with, uh, or you can just jump right in and start going. So I'm going to choose to use a dynamic composition for this. There's nothing wrong with using a static composition if you like that look better, but I personally prefer the dynamic, so that's what I'm gonna go with. And I'm just gonna take my Sharpie, the end of my Sharpie, and I'm going to push very lightly into my foil, and I'm going to start making designs. Now that line is pretty thin, so I'm gonna actually go back in. I wanna make it pretty thick and you'll see why in just a minute. So 
So I'm gonna continue doing that until my entire piece of foil is filled with texture. So five different implied textures that I'm going to create. So once you have your design um, transferred onto your foil, you're going to remove the foil from the magazine, and I'm actually going to flip it over. And remove it from the magazine, and now I am ready to start coloring it in with my Sharpies. So. Uh, you definitely want to use permanent marker for this. It doesn't have to be a Sharpie. That's just what I happen to have on hand. Um, but the permanent marker is going to stick the best to the foil. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm just going to start coloring in my different designs that I created. And I'm kind of stopping when I get to the edge of my pattern. That little spot that's kind of popping up there, that's called a relief. I'm not going, to, I'm trying not to smush the relief, so I'm going around the relief part of the foil. And I'm going to keep doing this until my entire piece of foil is filled in with design, with color. So once you have finished coloring in your design with the Sharpies, um, you're going to probably want to protect your design somehow because the tin foil is really fragile and I don't want it to tear. It can tear really easily. So what I've done is I've cut a piece of cardboard down just a little bit smaller than my actual um, foil relief design. And I'm just going to lay that cardboard on the back and I'm going to fold the foil over. And I know I'm gonna be cutting off just the edges of my design, but I'm okay with that. And just to make sure this is super secure, I'm gonna go ahead and tape it so it does not fall off. Just using masking tape, you can use whatever kind of tape you have available. Fold that last edge over. I'm gonna tape that. All right, there we go. That should be pretty secure. And so that is my finished product. I think it would look really cool if I actually put this in a frame uh, to hang up. So. If this is tricky for you to do, there is another way that you can create this kind of relief texture, and I will show you that in just a couple minutes. So if Using the Sharpie to create your relief texture in your foil was really tricky. Maybe um, your tin foil was tearing a lot or you weren't getting quite enough of an indent in your tin foil. The other way that you can create texture 
would be putting glue directly onto your piece of cardboard. I used hot glue. If you use hot glue, please be incredibly careful. It's called hot glue for a reason. Definitely don't wanna burn yourself. Um, you can use hot glue or you can use just regular Elmer's glue works just fine as well. Um, if you use regular Elmer, Elmer's glue, it's going to take a little bit longer for the glue to totally dry. You want the glue to be completely dry or in this case cooled before you put your tin foil on top. So again, all I did was created my dynamic design. I chose another dynamic composition um, to create texture on my cardboard with the glue. And now I'm just going to take my foil and I'm going to put it directly on top of that cardboard. And before I start really pushing it in there, I'm just gonna turn this around and tape it on the back so that my foil is not moving all around on me. And it's the same idea. So just like in the last video, I'm going to take permanent markers and I'm going to color in my design. All right. All right, so that's pretty good. That's not gonna move around on me. And now I'm just gonna take my hands and I'm just going to very carefully press down over that glue. And what's going to happen is the raised glue will start to create the design on my foil. So earlier on we talked about implied texture versus actual texture. This is creating actual texture. I can feel the bumps of the glue. If I rub my hand across this, I can feel the texture of the glue on the foil. Okay, so I can see my design really well. And I think because I did cool colors in the last design, I'm gonna stick with warm colors for this design. And I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna start coloring in between those glue marks with my Sharpies. Again, you wanna use permanent markers for this. Otherwise it doesn't stick to the foil. So unfortunately, Crayola washable markers won't work for this. You don't have to have actual Sharpies. You can use any kind of permanent marker as long as it's permanent. And because you're working with permanent marker, you wanna be really careful not to get it on your table. So I would recommend putting down maybe a piece of paper underneath this, just in case you accidentally go off of the cardboard. pictures of what you guys create. Um, I can't wait to see how you applied dynamic and static composition to create your textured pieces. Um, if you have questions at all about this project, you can feel free to email me and I will do my best to answer any questions that you might have. I know that these concepts are a little bit tricky, but I think that once you get started with them, you'll have no problem on picking up on what we're talking about. So have fun with this project and as always, happy art day.